Canon R5 versus Canon C70. Which one should you buy for video? For the past few months, the R5 has been my go-to camera for most of my video projects, replacing my previous go-to camera, the 1DX Mark III, in most scenarios. To see my comparison between the R5 and the 1DX Mark III, link will be in the description. But ultimately, I've been using both cameras for different situations, but I find myself using the R5 more, mostly because of its smaller form factor and the RF mount. But with the release of the new C70, I wanted to see if it could take over as my go-to camera, so I purchased one. No, this is not sponsored. And after having used the C70 for a few weeks now, I wanted to give you my thoughts on how it stacks up to the R5, what I like and don't like about each, and which one I'll be using most moving forward, and hopefully help you decide which camera is right for you to buy. So first, let's talk about the price. Currently, the R5 sells for $3,900, and the C70 sells for $6,500, so a huge gap in price, and this is going to be one of the biggest reasons to go with the R5 is that it's almost half the price. But does the C70 offer enough perks to justify the price? Let's find out. Next up is resolution. The R5 shoots 8K, the C70 maxes out at 4K. So R5 wins this category. I will say though, I've only shot 8K a couple times and no one's been able to tell the difference between that and a 4K image, especially when uploaded to YouTube and especially since most of you are watching on 1080p phone screens. Not to mention, I've only been able to film up to about 30 minutes in 8K before the camera overheats. So I wouldn't buy the R5 for this feature alone, but it's there. So since most of you will be using 4K with both cameras, which one has the best 4K image? Here's a clip of both cameras using the same 28 to 70 millimeter lens, both using autofocus and to the naked eye, again, on a phone screen, no one's gonna be able to tell a difference, but when zoomed in 400% and when the R5 is on non-HQ 4K mode, I'd give a slight edge to the C70 in sharpness. But the R5 does have the 4K HQ mode that is essentially 8K downscale to 4K, and that 4K HQ mode is going to look just a tad sharper than the C70. And for reference, Here's the 8K stacked up against the C74 k and obviously it blows it out of the water as far as sharpness goes. But again, using HQ mode or the 8K mode on the R5 will overheat after about 30 minutes of straight recording. So I don't consider this a professional option in most scenarios. So though the R5 has sharper options that overheat, the C70 has sharper 4K images that don't overheat. So we'll call this a draw. You choose the winner. Let's talk next about the biggest difference between these two cameras, and that is the sensor size. The R5 is a full frame and the C70 is a Super 35, which has a crop factor of 1.6. Personally, I'm a huge full frame snob, so I think this is a big pro for the R5. And one of the main reasons I almost didn't buy the C70, all of my lenses are for full frame and I love the full frame depth of field. So I was super bummed to hear the C70 has a smaller sensor and I'm looking forward to a full frame version of it coming out hopefully soon. But the C70 does have an RF to EF 0.71X adapter, and I probably wouldn't have bought this camera without it. That essentially gives the C70 a full frame field of view, but only when using EF lenses. When using RF lenses, you have the 1.6 crop. We'll talk more about the adapter later, but overall, I like the full frame of the R5 sensor better. As for autofocus, overall the R5 is just going to perform better. The face detection's better, the system overall is more reliable, especially when your subject is underexposed, but for most scenarios the C70 is still very reliable. In fact, I prefer using the C70 for talking heads like this because you can choose face only autofocus, so when you turn your head, it doesn't hunt focus and grab onto the back wall like my 1DX has often did. It will just keep the focus where it last saw your face until the face returns. So both are awesome, but I would give the edge to the R5 for the best autofocus. Moving on now to slow motion, this is where the C70 steals a point. Both can shoot 4K up to 120 frames, but the quality of the C70 120 frame footage is just a little bit better quality. It does allow you to use autofocus, but not face tracking. Whereas the R5 can face track at 120, and this clip is a perfect example of me setting up both cameras on a tripod. R5 on face tracking and C70 just had the autofocus set to the middle of the frame, but because I wasn't exactly in the middle of the frame, it focused on the background. So you can see how that missing feature could be a deal breaker, but the R5 doesn't allow you to record audio at 120 frames, whereas the C70 does. And the C70 also allows up to 180 frames at 1080p, whereas the R5 maxes out at 120, but it does crop in on the already cropped sensor to a Super 16 sensor, so not a super usable 180 frames, but it's there. Again, worth mentioning the R5 will overheat if using 120 frames, so not a super reliable option. So overall, if you shoot a lot of super slow-mo, the C70 is going to be your better choice. Moving on now to in-camera colors and picture profiles, this is probably 
probably my favorite thing about the C70. The R5 has awesome straight out of camera colors and allows you to film in C-Log 10-bit and even RAW 12-bit, but the 12-bit 8K RAW isn't a very reliable workflow because of the giant file sizes and how hard they are to edit and the fact that it overheats. So even though the C70 doesn't have 12-bit or RAW, I wouldn't use it anyway. What I'm more interested in is the Rec. 709 10-bit profile out of the C70. As many of you know, for quicker turnaround projects like these YouTube videos, for example, I don't like shooting in C-Log or RAW because it just makes for massive file sizes, slower editing, and more color tweaking in post. But the R5 standard profile, which is an equivalent to the C70's Rec. 709 profile, only shoots 8-bit and doesn't have as good of dynamic range. But with the C70, I can basically shoot in a standard profile in the Rec. 709, but with the color flexibility of 10-bit, and much better dynamic range than the R5. So that has become my new favorite profile to shoot in, plus it has better C-Log options than the R5. So even if you do like shooting with C-Log, you'll be happier with the C70. Speaking of dynamic range, this is one of the biggest reasons I got the C70. I love my straight out of camera standard profile on Canon DSLR and mirrorless cameras like the R5, but the dynamic range does struggle. The C70, however, comes with their new DGO or dual gain output technology that claims 16 stops of dynamic range compared to the R5's claimed 14 stops. I won't do any scientific tests, but stacking them up side by side, the difference in highlight and shadow detail, both in the image and in the scopes, is very apparent and a big reason to go with the C70 if you want a more cinematic, professional-looking image. And not that many of us are shooting Netflix content, but fun fact, the C70 is Netflix approved for their originals, so it passes their quality test, joining the ranks of many other cinema cameras out there. Another big reason I bought the C70 is I heard that its codecs are easier to edit than the R5. The R5 image is great, but editing its files in Premiere has caused a lot of crashes and slow scrubbing or a lot of long hours creating proxies, so not a huge fan of the workflow. And the C70 has proven to be easier to edit, not leaps and bounds better, but easier to the point that I don't need to create proxies. File size wise, when shooting an IPB 4K 10-bit log on the R5, which is its smallest 4K 10-bit file size, and XF AVC 4K long op 10-bit on the C70, which is what I use for longer format talking heads like this. A 10 second clip from the R5 comes out to 220 megabits per second, and the C70 comes out to 205 megabits per second. Both very manageable file sizes, allowing you to shoot for about three and a half hours at 24 frames 4K 10 bit on a 256 gigabyte card. But the C70 comes in at a little bit smaller file sizes and much better codecs for easier editability in post, which makes a huge difference in the overall user experience of each camera. Next category is low light performance. When both cameras are set to 25,600 ISO, they are both unusable, but the R5 does have less overall noise, probably due to the bigger sensor. And if you recall from my 1DX Mark III comparison to the R5, the Mark III did better in low light, so the R5 is decent, but not as good as other options. And the C70 comes in just behind the R5, so the C70 isn't your best low light option, but I do think you can get away with shooting at about 3,200 ISO on the C70 and still have a usable image, whereas you could probably get away with like 6400 ISO on the R5. Both decent ranges, but R5 is the winner here. Moving on now to our next category is the body size. The C70 weighs 3.08 pounds with battery compared to the R5 weighing in at 1.63 pounds with the battery, making the C70 almost two times heavier. And this is a big reason I initially went to the R5 because my 1DX Mark III weighs 3.17 pounds with the battery. And that's obviously a lot heavier to carry around on a gimbal or a glide cam. So I wanted something lighter for run and gun, but the C70 weighs about the same as the 1DX, so I'm right back to that heavier setup with the C70. So R5 definitely takes the cake for being so light and compact. As for battery life, the R5 lasts about 2 hours and 10 minutes recording 4K video non-stop, whereas the C70 has a lot bigger batteries that last 3 hours recording 4K video non-stop, with the option to use even bigger batteries and the option to plug DC in so your camera will never turn off. So the C70 wins this category by a landslide. How about simplicity and ease of use? As far as menu systems, the R5 is pretty easy to navigate and buttons are straightforward. The C70 is a bit more complex in both the menu system and buttons on the camera, but it does allow you to customize a lot more buttons, which I really like. So whereas the R5 is gonna be easier to learn straight out of the box, the C70 might end up being easier to use in the long run once you've memorized all of your customized buttons. There's things I like and don't like about each, but as far as simplicity for new users, R5 
5 wins this category. Moving on now to the LCD screens, they both have articulating flip screens. The R5s is 3.2 inches and the C70s is 3.5 inches, so slightly bigger, but the screen quality isn't as good in my opinion. It reminds me kind of of a Sony screen where it's just harder to see colors and exposure. They do both have touch to focus and touch to edit settings, and they're each just a little bit different. Personally, I like the R5 screen quality a little bit better, so I'm gonna give the edge to the R5 on this one. Next up is dual recording and recording limits. The R5 can't dual record unless you're shooting an 8K RAW, which is rare and is limited to 30 minutes of recording, whereas the C70 can dual record, including recording proxies, and has no recording limits. This was another reason I wanted the C70 over both the R5 and the 1DX Mark III for those long interviews or long takes like live events. On to the next category is image stabilization. This one goes to the R5. It has five axis in-body stabilization plus digital stabilization options, whereas the C70 only has digital stabilization options, and a side-by-side -side will show you that the R5 is going to look quite a bit smoother. As for video tools, the R5 has focus peaking and zebras, but the C70 has a lot more tools, my favorite being the waveforms, a nice upgrade from the histogram for checking correct exposure, so the C70 wins this one with a lot more video tools to choose from. Another win for the C70 is the audio inputs and controls. The R5 just has a mic input, whereas the C70 has a mic input along with two micro XL LR inputs and manual gain controls behind the LCD screen. You do need adapter cables in order to plug an XLR cable into the camera, but having that XLR option is nice so you don't have to run nice microphones into separate recorders like the Zoom 6. You can just do it all in camera. Up next is rolling shutter. A quick test would show that both have it. Neither is great in this department, but neither looks worse than the other, so I'd call this category a draw. Next category is accessory options and cost. As far as the cost of accessories, the R5 takes CF Express cards and SD cards, and the C70 just takes SD cards, so a bit more expensive for the R5, whereas the C70 has multiple battery options, but they will cost more than the R5. The C70 also comes with a top handle. It's not great, it's not terrible. I keep it on when I'm shooting handheld, it's nice to have, and I really only take it off when I'm shooting on a gimbal. And yes, my Ronin S2 can fly the C70 with my heaviest lens, no problem. But the must-have accessory for the C70 is that 0.71 EF adapter. If you wanna be able to use your full-frame EF glass, then plan on spending an additional $600. This adapter is pretty interesting. Essentially, if you have it on and your lens is set to a 2.0 aperture, the C70 won't have as much depth of field as the R5 would at 2.0 because they have a different sensor size, but the EF adapter allows the C70 to go down to 1.4 on a 2.0 lens or 0.9 on a 1.2 lens. So when the R5 is set to 2.0 and the C70 is set to 1.4, you will get the same depth of field as if the C70 was set to 2.0. But the C70 at 1.4 does let in more light, exposing brighter than the R5 at 2.0. So essentially, the C70 plus EF adapter can achieve the same depth of field as the full frame R5, but it lets in more light than the R5. But the R5 does better in low light, so it's probably a wash. Next up is built-in ND filters. This is another big reason I bought the C70 over something like the Red Komodo, is the fact that it has built-in ND filters. It ranges from two to 10 stops, and this is super nice to have at the click of a button to allow you to get your exposure 90% there without having to take ND filters on and off. And as someone who tends to just go without ND filters because I hate putting them on and off, this is a lazy man's best friend. I do wish it had more incremental stops, but the C70s is definitely better than not having one at all. Next category is lens options. Both can take EF and RF lenses, but the C70 RF lenses are limited to the crop Super 35 sensor, whereas the R5 uses both RF and EF lenses in full frame mode, so R5 wins this category category for me. As for reliability, build quality, weather sealing, overheating, both are built like tanks, amazing quality. The R5 has awesome weather sealing, whereas the C70 is only weather resistant, not quite weather sealed due to its active fan. However, because it has a fan on the bottom, it doesn't overheat, which is the R5's biggest downfall and biggest reason why many won't shoot with it professionally is because it's not reliable for more than 30 to 60 minutes or so if shooting in certain shooting modes like 8K, 4K, HD. 
HQ, 4K60 and 4K20. So this is a huge win for the C70 as no matter what you throw at it, it's not going to overheat. And the last category worth considering is the camera's ability to double as a photo camera as well for thumbnails, social posts, or just high res stills that you may want to capture during your video shoots, which I find is a growing request from a lot of clients. The R5 is an amazing stills camera, one of the best out there, and one of the main reasons I bought it Whereas the C70 is video only, can't take steals. So if you're on a project that requires steals as well, you'll have to buy and or bring along a dedicated photo camera with you as well. So win here for the R5. So there you have a look at some of the pros and cons of each camera. They both ended up winning a pretty even amount of categories. Just a matter of which categories are weighted the most for you and what you shoot specifically. As for me, the C70 has already started to become my main go-to camera for things like this talking head, other long format interviews or live events and maybe even an upcoming podcast. I think it's just gonna provide the more cinematic image with a more manageable workflow at a more reliable level of performance. However, there are situations where I need the better autofocus of the R5, or I want the smaller form factor for less fatiguing gimbal work, or I'm in a situation where I'm taking a lot of steals alongside my video. So really, I'm going to keep and use both of these cameras, and only time will tell which one I end up using the most. But after buying the C70, I did sell my 1DX Mark III, because between the C70 and the R5, they check all the boxes that are most important to me, making my Mark III the least used camera of the three, so I sold it. So hopefully this head-to-head -head comparison helped you recognize where the two cameras shine and where they fall short and make an assessment on which pros and cons are most important to you. At the end of the day, they are both amazing tools and you can produce amazing results with both as long as you learn how to utilize them to their fullest potential. So make sure to check out fulltimefilmmaker.com to watch our free one hour filmmaking training where we share our top 10 secrets to achieving cinematic shots, no matter what camera you're using, including your phone. Links in the description to check that out. Lastly guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.